everyone. This is News Now from the Belmont Journal, and we are joined by Franklin Tucker, editor of the Belmontonian, and I'm your host, Mike Crowley. So welcome, Franklin. Today we're talking about, how about a town meeting recap? That sounds great, because we had our first two um, uh, meetings of the uh, segment A of town meeting, which is the non-budgetary part of it. And uh, it was pretty uh, staid. It was mostly meat and potatoes kind of uh, amendments. But, but we had a little bit of excitement. That's right. Uh, a few of the uh, articles uh, did bring a number of people to discuss it. Uh, we had one article that had uh, a great number of uh, amendments, three. Uh, so uh, I think the, uh, the big one uh, that had a lot of people talking was uh, just the acceptance of a road, uh, which is now called Oak Oakmont. And what's 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 so so curious about that? Yeah, unlike other uh, private roads that have been accepted by the town, um, which which has to get in the buy-in from every resident who's along the street, you have to have every resident say yes, we want to be accepted by the town. This one was uh, the street is actually owned by the developer, and uh, uh, what this um, uh, did is it had a a bit of a different uh, feel to it. You know, the, the residents didn't say that we want to be part of it. Um, it was basically part of the purchase and sale agreement from the developer to the town when they, when he purchased this uh, town-owned land back in 2015. So it's now come to be before town meeting, and uh, there was a lot of debate. Let's. Uh, there were uh, some uh, some people were saying, "Why should we accept this? It's a private road by a developer. It's not for individuals who have this road. It's a developer." And Frank, Franklin, there, there's something interesting about about this to me, and that's that. Uh, the developer signed um, an agreement with the select board, and the select board basically fulfilled their obligation when when this article was brought before town meeting. And town meeting was never under any obligation to accept it. Is, isn't that right? Exactly. It, uh, and that's what a lot of people were saying. And they said, why should we accept this road? You know, the, while the, the select board did what they said they were going to do, there's no reason why we should. And why should we bring this... Uh, payment onto to why should we bring this potential uh, you know um, obligation obligation on to the town's books? Well, it turned out that that uh, the, the people who were saying that um, we should accept it, they said it's it's a moral obligation. You know, they're four residents of the town. You know, they're asking that you know that they should be part of the town. You know, we should we, we should be this should be a common good. Basically. I, and I I think that Mark Polillo, the chair of the select board, you know, made that argument. That that's, this was a moral obligation. That's right, and, and that seemed to. Uh, I think there was a lot, of, a lot to do with fairness. Apart uh, in just a uh, town meeting, you know, there was there was an, also a um, uh, a movement to um, uh, there was a movement to keep people who uh, I guess are eight uh, d dispatchers uh, who um, are uh, who are part of the retirement plan in, in Belmont. Now uh, the states. Uh, uh, did a review of this, and they said uh, of, of the town's complete, um, uh, you know, retirement uh, uh, situation. They said, "Oh, these these eight uh, uh, people they were, they were misclassified. They were misclassified. They should be in a in, in a classification where they have to spend more time on the job and get a little less in benefits." Well, again, this is a fairness issue, and and the town meeting said, "Look, what we're going to do is we're going to keep them on this this uh, this this." Uh, a little bit more grace, uh, a little bit more benefits, you know, allow them to stay in their their grouping until they retire. And it turned out that the total amount of money that the town is going to have to spend extra is about $160,000. And the town said, you know, we just want to be fair to these guys. You know, they, they were hired under this classification, keep them in the classification. And for new employees um, oh, doing the same job, they, they, they will be properly classified. That's right. It's, that's what it is. All right, and then there was one other article that attracted a lot of discussion, and, and three amendments. I think you mentioned that was it was part of the uh, it was the, the uh, capital budget. Uh, there was a new capital budget committee. Um, we basically are putting a temporary capital budget, a long term capital budget, with the existing capital budget, and you get mall, you know, just put them together. They had three amendments to it. Two were basically housekeeping, you know, just a little bit of change. There was one by uh, uh, Bob McGaugh. Uh, which stated that uh, you know he wanted to have find uh, he wanted to specifically say look if we're going to have these this uh, new uh, 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 new group this new uh, uh, committee they should be really they should have their uh, they should really look into uh, financial uh, generally accepted financial practices that's right was. that's what it was and it seems like it's just 
it's something that you would want to put in there. But what the what everybody would but but what the opponents of that said is what is that exactly does that mean? Do we really want to follow those or are other things that we can follow like you know social justice? Is, you know we don't want them to just be looking at one certain aspect of financial analysis. Uh, so it, it it was defeated. All right, Franklin. So so we'll have more town meeting on Monday. Um, we also have a number of movements taking place with businesses, that's including CVS in Leonard's, on Leonard Street. That's moved. right. It is almost a, it is going to be announced soon that uh, CVS will be moving across the street of Leonard Street into a bigger space. Uh, I think it's a Locatelli, um, uh, the landlord. I believe that it's going to in his space, uh, although no one is saying anything. No one is just, there's no... No one's saying anything. Everything's keeping. No, but fresh. actually, I think the signs are already up. Yes, there are, but they're not saying anything about them. Okay. Going, oh, who put those signs up? <laughs> uh, so, uh, so that's a big move. Um, we also understand that the uh, that the uh, Bank of America branch is on the which is on the same side of the street. The uh, uh, so they are also going to be closing. Um, so there's going to be a big space that's going to be open in that area, along with other spaces that are opening up. Another space that is opening is Camella's. Camella's is moving. The, the rest of the Italian restaurant is going to be moving. Uh, mo a lot of people say that they're going to the loading dock uh -huh. with the old loading dock on Brighton Street. Uh, but other people are saying that they're maybe rethinking that because they would want to stay in, uh, closer to a more active area, which would be uh, Cushing Square. Cushing Square is now going to have a new uh, Japanese sushi restaurant and a very big uh, uh, move by a, a developer, a restaurateur named Jack Say. And, um, uh, this is going to be in the old Ben Franklin. Right? That's right, and it's going to be a very, uh, uh, it's going to be a, a major uh, renovation and, and, and something that uh, people are going to be uh, looking to. And you know, I asked, I said, what is, is, is some of the some of the food going to be like? Uh, the net the, the Netflix um, uh, series called uh, Midnight Diner, which is a, a Japanese show for, and it's it's just gr it's a great way of learning Japanese food just by looking at this show. And he said, yeah, there's going to be a, a lot of that kind of uh, really, um, you know, uh, not fancy food, but just, you know, just just the type of food that he had, comfort food. Japanese Jap comfort Jap food. So who, who would want that? So a lot of movement is now going along, and um, we'll see what happens. But what you're seeing is that, you know, a lot of um, major places in, in, in uh, Belmont Center are closing. You know, we're not, uh, Starbucks is gone. That's going to be filled in by, um, I, I, I think, um, uh, an, uh, an existing store in Belmont. But other than that, we're we're, we're seeing not, we're seeing a lot of movement outside of Belmont. You know, that's going to be a, a big space when you when you take a look at uh, uh, CVS moving. You know, so you're going to have one side of the, the street, you know, kind of uh, a little depressed. A lot of open uh, storefronts. Well, that's unfortunate, mm -hmm. but. Uh... In positive news, I, I understand that we have a tree planting program that is experiencing some success. That's right. Uh, uh, on Arbor Day, uh, uh, the first of the trees were, were, were planted un under this new tree program, and it was uh, uh, the sponsor for that tree is the uh, uh, the uh, Girl Scout troop, and uh, they they planted it. And what we saw also is about ten other people have uh, uh, donated between three hundred and five hundred dollars to. Um, have a tree planted throughout town, and uh, their names will be uh, uh, placed on a plaque in town hall, and, it'll, and you can commem commemorate uh, uh, wedding anniversaries, parents, children's births, anything like that. And uh, and then, like I said, just the first couple of weeks, uh, ten people come up and, and ask for that. So, and it's all you have to do is go to the DPW, and they're doing that, and. Uh, just call them up and um, see if you can do your own request. All right. Well, that sounds great. So thank you, Franklin. We'll see you next time. And if you'd like to see more of Franklin's reporting, please please be sure to visit Belmontonian.com. That's it for this time, and we will see you next week.